So welcome to the, the, the Topco Business Unusual podcast. Today, I'm joined by Anna Collard. Anna Collard is the founder. Uh, she's the managing director of um, well, no, no, uh, no before. So she, she was obviously the founder as well before that of Popcorn. So I think it's really amazing to meet someone who's not just an award-winning woman, but an entrepreneur and a mother. Um, it's almost like three jobs in one, right? So welcome to the Business Unusual podcast, Anna. Thanks so much for having me, Rolf. It's good to be here. I, lo I love the view behind you. Kind of uh, makes me feel like we're not working. Yeah. <laughs> nice view of Table Mountain. Obviously, you're in Cape Town. Yes, yeah. So I think that's one of the things that we realized when we, when we did Africa Tech Week. And, and you were one of the recipients of, of Businesswoman in Africa Tech. And, yes. And, and I kind of, I, I thought I've had, had the idea that South Africa is, is endeared with these, these great places to live. And this is a great amount of talent. And it really is from a, from a tech perspective, the ideal location to reside. And, and, and I thought I, like Africa Tech would be a great vehicle to celebrate not just the skills in South Africa, the, 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 the companies, but also the tourism aspect, the lifestyle. I mean, how, how do you find that? You, you're, you, you're obviously from Germany. Yes, and I, I mean, I agree with you. I think Cape Town is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And it's because of that, that it attracts a lot of, I guess, creative minds or people that innovate because they, they just sort of strive on the beauty of the scenery and the nature. And then there's also a lot of really clever and um, I suppose, you know, um, cool startups and tech and creative agencies and companies in Cape Town itself. So you get access to really smart, bright people. There's great universities around. So mm -hmm. overall, I, I, I don't know if there is such a thing. There probably is, but um, like the top 10 cities to start a business in, I'd say Cape Town should definitely be on it. I agree. <laughs> I think what, what I saw, I saw a lot of people leaving school or university and really looking at challenges in South Africa and not looking at the opportunities. And there was this like talent drain going to the rest of Europe or America. And I suppose Elon Musk is probably the most relevant one out of everybody. But, the, but then there's you that's come, and it's not just you, there's so many Europeans and Americans, international people are seeing those opportunities in South Africa and Cape Town. What, what, how, did you, how, did you come up, how did you come about coming to Cape Town? It was more, uh, well, accidentally, actually, I, I studied in, in Germany, in Munich, and um, I actually did, I wasn't in tech, I did an international uh, BA or sort of economics um, degree, and part of our, our studies, you know, we had to do internships abroad, and I have an uncle in South Africa, so I sort of, okay, well, I'll, I'll go, <laughs> uh, I'll go there and worked in his company for, I think it's six weeks or eight weeks and I really fell in love with the country I, I enjoyed it and then um, when I finished studying I wanted to come and stay for a year and that year became nearly three years and I joined a company called Dimension Data they are uh, I guess South Africa's biggest IT reseller or network integrator and and that's where my whole career in the security space started so um, through Dimension Data I've, I've worked both in the, back in Europe, and then um, I met a nice South African man, I guess, and that was I ultimately the reason. That. <laughs> <laughs> that kept well, you here. Why that I ended up. <laughs> um, yeah, so in 2008, I came back to Cape Town for good, and I haven't regretted it once. So I love living here, I love you. working here. And I also believe that if I had the same idea in, in Germany, it may have been more difficult to. Sure. go through with it you know there's a lot more red tape and bureaucracy and naysayers people that just um tell you no nah, you can't do that and there's too much risk whereas i find generally the attitude in south africa is really motivating and positive and if i think back when i, I started the business it, it was it wasn't meant to be a business it was more of a, an idea and i pitched it to one of my customers old mutual at the time and they were just so cool about it. And they said, no, Anna, you have to do this. And 
you know, do it this way, not that way. And they really gave me great insight and really enabled me to, you know, like get this thing going. And um, yeah, it, it's through the South African optimism and can do mm -hmm. attitude, I guess that, um, yeah, things can actually, well, Happen. be born in a way that sure. may be more difficult in, in Europe or specifically yeah. Germany. For sure, and 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 I and I read that you did that BA, but I was like, but you focused on on security, and I'm like, what? Why would a nice girl from Germany be focused on cybersecurity for? <laughs> so it was, it, it was something that early on you had this. I don't know what was the interest or what what what. what yeah. Focused on... Again, it was more coincidence. So, in in Germany, when you go to university, most students have a side job, like you wait you know you waiter or i was a waitress but then you can also start working in companies like siemens just and i went there purely because they pay better than your waitressing job and you can start like a, it's called the siemens student program where you work for 20 hours a week and you get exposed to different areas and you can still study you know and finish your studies and they um they basically told me, okay, there's three um, subjects that you can write your thesis in, and one of them was security, but this was 2001. So it wasn't really a, a big sort of hot topic back in the day, but it sounded more exciting than, I think they had CRM and mobility or something. <laughs> Those were the other to topics. So I just chose it because I thought, oh, okay, this sounds cool. And that's how I got into it. It was literally uh, through my side job and yeah, and then um, actually, the more you, when you start reading up on cybersecurity or information security, that's what it was called back in the day, um, yeah. and you're interested in learning, then it's such a fascinating field because, I mean, I've been in it now for nearly 20 years. Well, 20 years, yes, a few. <laughs> um, and you can never stop learning. You know, there's it covers so many aspects. Like you can go into the the deep technical sort of. I know pen penetration testing and the ethical hacking side or into application security into networking into the cloud but you can also go completely different in the sort of human psychology side um you know there's so many different avenues to grow into the security field and um yeah it, it, it's if you if you do enjoy learning and that's something i, I definitely do and new yeah. things, then it's a, a super field to be in and grow. For sure. And then I saw that um, it was quite interesting. You you loved drawing when you were younger. <laughs> yes. And then, and then it sort of came out in your in your entrepreneurial life. Yeah. Obviously, that's like a, a passion. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's right. And I always I always drew. Um, little cartoons, even in school, you know, I made these little comic strips and I, w I actually wanted to study art, not economics, but my dad was the one who said, nah, there's no money in it, like do something more sensible. And um, and then I sort of, I, I accidentally fell into the, into the security space, but having the economics background helped obviously as well in terms of, a, you know, um, I don't know, just business common sense, I guess. And then, yeah. um, so when uh, 2011 <clears throat> we went on honeymoon yeah. and i uh, just um while my husband was was in the you know sailing uh, we we went to um t uh, tanzania to zanzibar um yeah. i was on the okay. on the beach and just drew these little characters and the little adventures that they had in in the cyber security space just like sort of more for fun but also because i thought i would have this was my dream before is to take cybersecurity and and explain it to non it and non <clears throat> technical people in like a fun way using a, a cartoon story and this was literally so my honeymoon little self-drawn storyboard is what i showed to old mutual and then we obviously got professional animators involved and, and did it um properly but that's sort of how i could combine the drawing and the the story creation and the arts with the stuff that I learned in the security space and yeah create the I suppose the, the business it's, it's so funny because actually I, I whenever I podcast with people they often have a dream when they're younger that normally when they go to university they pivot 
So they actually yeah. change. They see an opportunity and they change. And you sort of did that. But then it's it's unusual where people can pivot from their career and bring in their passion as well into an entrepreneurial thing. But you've definitely done that as well, which is also a really interesting sort of observation where you've got your skill. It's like that Igashi. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's where you bring your no. your passion and your skill or what you're good at and what you're good at making money and how you can impact the world. Yes. Um, it's like a Japanese purpose-driven way of living. Igashi, you must read the book. It's, it, it, and it, will, it, will, it will sit with you because it will be like, wow, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, doing a lot of different things that's um, supplementing my soul. But I mean, you spoke about your dad. How, how influential were your parents, like coming to South Africa and... <laughs> um yeah I, th I think quite well he's you know obviously that he's not happy that i'm so far away especially now with this whole um COVID restrictions but you know he when um i don't know in the, in the end 70s he took my brother we weren't um born yet but my older brother was i think three or four and he went off with my mom and my brother on a like nearly three year trip on a sailing boat around the world. So he is quite an adventurer and he always told us, mm -hmm. go out there, you know, see the world. Um, and he, I, he always encouraged me. He was never, he never once said, oh, you know, be careful. I mean, obviously be careful, but he was never, <clears throat> he never doubted that I wouldn't be able to, you know, look after myself or, yeah. you know, make it. Um, I mean, so, you, you, you've received some of the top awards, not just in South Africa, but internationally for a woman in, in cybersecurity, which is pretty amazing. And I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know, but I'm guessing and I'm thinking there's not too many women in cybersecurity, certainly not in South Africa. We know there's a shortage, right? I think that's one of the things you're talking around. How do we develop yeah. talent? How do we develop skills? How do we get more people involved? What do you see that needs to either happen in Africa to get more women into tech? What are you seeing that you, is it, do you think it's your family, the culture of your dad having that travel and going away? So is it, do you think that your dad's sort of, your family sort of impact impacted on you? Or, or do you think it was more of the social or cultural things that sort of helped you? And, and do you see any differences in South Africa? I think, so I think the point that you raised they're, they're really relevant so globally um only 20 percent of the you know people working in security are women in africa it's only nine percent and in senior management position we only have one percent of females um i don't think it's in particular like there's nobody out there that says oh i don't want to have any woman working in in the space so it's not a conscious um like decision anyway but it's, it's actually quite a we just released a, a research paper called tomorrow subherence that looks at exactly that and um why it's so important to particularly in africa to attract the girls to join the tech industries or the cyber security um to space and also to make it more attractive because what happens and it actually happens at a very young age is yeah. that girls get socialized um really like this whole bias system happens without any malicious intent like you can just walk into a toy store and you can see that the science like cool stuff is in the blue boys section and then and i happen to have a girl and a boy so i know and then do you think in the you've girls implemented section, that bias do you, do you think well, you've, you've been you've been part of the the problem I think we all are, yes. And it's not, it's, it's men and women, same thing. Like we, we teach our girls from young age, okay, you need to be interested in unicorns and Barbies and makeup and the boys can play with the cool stuff. And, and not that there's anything wrong with Barbies and, and pink is a nice color, you know, don't get me wrong. But I think we need to really do more to encourage the girls to also get their interest into the, the technical side of things, make the tech more pink maybe or more girls friendly um what was really interesting the feedback we got from the survey that